It's amazing. I have been part of this hearing um, virtually and listening to the comments, and I've been quite surprised. It's amazing how many times we heard defund the police, defund the police, and then to hear you didn't hear what your lying ears and eyes have been telling you you heard. Uh, move along. There's nothing to see or hear here. Uh, because we have not advocated for defund the police. It doesn't take, well, you need to use something besides Google, but uh, if you do a proper search, not a Google search, but a proper search that's not adversely affected by the uh, Ministry of Truth, um, then you'll find plenty of quotes from friends across the aisle who wanted to defund the police including uh, two people on our committee uh, on the Democrat side, not the Republican side. And when we hear that Republicans voted against Capitol Police getting the Medal of Honor, I can tell you as one person that voted against that bill, I was not against them getting the Medal of Honor. I was against having any lies in the bill as part of the recitation. This is something we've seen over and over where Democrats will put something meritorious, something we can all agree on the bill, and then put a lie in there as part of a recitation so that, oh, well, if you vote for the thing we all agree on, then we can use that against you and say, you admitted that this falsity was true. And so some of us just have a problem voting for things that we know are not true. It, it's like law enforcement putting a false statement in the middle of a bunch of true statements and asking the witness or the defendant to sign it. It's not appropriate, and nobody should ever find, sign a statement or vote for a bill that has a ridiculous statement of fact that is not. It is also coming on the heels of being shocked by hearing people on the other side of the aisle actually advocate for what Orwell predicted some 80, 70 years ago. Let's have something which is, sounds like a ministry of truth, where the government tells us what's true, and then anybody that goes against that is a domestic terrorist and will have them arrested. I haven't heard anybody on the other side advocate for the ministry of love that Orwell talked about, that if you disagreed with the ministry of truth, then you're a domestic terrorist. And in 1984, the ministry of love would come arrest you in some outrageous manner. Oh, kind of like the Department of Justice is doing since January 6th. And then they would take you to the basement and torture you until you agreed with whatever the Ministry of Truth said. I mean, it is incredible how far we're going in the wrong direction. We should be coming together. If we're ever going to get to Dr. King's dream, it means we quit advocating for looking at the color of people's skin, that we stop this ridiculous idea of now let's segregate so that one color people can have certain accommodations. I mean, it's going. we're going the wrong way. Uh, and who's behind the recent rise in U.S. anti-Semitic attacks? This is a BBC article, because it's hard to find a main, mainstream. We used to call them mainstream, now they're all left. But in this article, it says, violence and harassment targeting American Jews broke out coast to coast amid the 11 days of fighting between Israelis and Palestinians that ended in a ceasefire on 20 May. This is from 2021. Incidents including outdoor diners in Los Angeles were, who were physically attacked by a group carrying Palestinian flags, violence against Orthodox Jews in New York City, home to the largest population of Jews outside of Israel, and Nazi imagery posted on synagogue in Alaska this week. But it goes on to point out that uh, last year saw the third largest or highest number um, of attacks, and it comes during the Democrats' tectonic shift against Israel. 
Uh, that's worth noting, and it's worth getting into the record. I yield back. The gentleman yields back for what purpose does the gentlelady from Georgia seek recognition? Thank you so much, uh, much, Mr. Chairman. I move to strike the last word. Gentlelady is recognized. Thank you. One year ago today, on March 16th, 2021, the Atlanta community was rocked by the horrific mass shooting on three different spas, which took the lives of eight innocent victims. Now, this was a targeted attack on the Asian American community. And all three of the spas, they were owned by Asian Americans. And six of those eight victims were Asian women. These types of hate crimes, they've existed for decades, but they've continued to rise over the past several years. The Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act would actually help us to stop these horrendous hate crimes from happening. And it would also help to stop our communities from continuing to reel with the pain and the loss that so many have felt and they continue to feel. DPTA would finally create dedicated domestic terrorism units within our federal executive departments who would be tasked with monitoring, investigating, and prosecuting cases of domestic terrorism. Additionally, based on joint biannual reporting to Congress, these offices would focus their resources on the most significant threats. And importantly, in preparing these reports, the newly created offices would review hate crime incidents to determine if those incidents constitute domestic terrorism. One month ago, our Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security subcommittee, subcommittee held a hearing on the rise in violence against minority institutions, calling attention to the increased domestic terrorism threats made uh, against historically Black colleges and universities. In my home state of Georgia, three institutions have received bomb threats over the past few months. These include Spelman College, Fort Valley State University, and Albany State University. So hate crimes like this undermine the safety and the security of our institutions. So the Domestic Terrorism Preven Prevention Act of 2021 really makes it much easier for our federal agencies to get the information that they need to keep our schools, our communities, and our nation safer. Domestic terrorism is not just a threat to Atlanta or to HBCUs. It is a threat to all Americans and a threat to our democracy. That's why I strongly urge my colleagues today and every day to vote in the affirmative, but particularly today on this bipartisan bill. It's sorely needed and is sorely past time. And I yield back to the gentleman. Yield. I yield to my colleague from Maryland. Thank you so much, Ms. McBath, and also for uh, those uh, clarifying remarks. Uh, I, I just, I needed to intervene because I heard the gentleman from Texas uh, talk about how the Department of Justice is somehow being converted into a ministry, ministry of truth. Um, of course, that has nothing to do with the bill, which is all about responding to actual episodes of domestic violence committed by domestic terrorists. Um, but the gentleman opposes a ministry of truth. He seems to support a ministry of lies. Uh, he has bought into I would ask Donald that Trump the gentleman's words be taken down. I do not support lies. I made that clear. Okay. I would well, ask the middle gentleman's that. words be taken down. Chairman, I'm not going to sit floor? here and be told the that I will, favor the lies. The gentleman will suspend. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, I believe that the gentleman has endorsed Donald Trump's false claim that he won the 2020 presidential election. I have election. not done so. I have said there was fraud in the election, and that is being brought, borne out by... It has been rejected by more than 60... One at a time. It doesn't change my motion to have the gentleman's words taken down. I won't sit here and be told that Does I the gentleman? Lies. That the Does the gentleman from Maryland wish to rephrase? Let's see. I, I said that the gentleman from Texas is talking about a ministry of truth. He seems to favor a ministry of lies. I was proceeding to talk about his support for Donald Trump's big lie for uh, Donald Trump's I take it then. That I take it then the gentleman does not choose to rephrase. 
Well, I mean, if, if he's willing to dissociate himself from Donald Trump's big lie, then I'm delighted to take it down. If he will denounce Donald I, Trump's I, big I, lie... I, I take it. The gentleman... The gentleman... The gentleman... The gentleman... If the gentleman will withdraw his comments, we can move on. If not, we'll have to vote on taking okay. the words. Well, Based on my understanding that he does not advance Donald Trump's big lie, then I'm happy to say that he is not favoring a ministry of lies based on that stipulation, because I, I'd understood that he was going along with uh, Donald Trump's big lie. But if he's not, that's terrific. And I, I just hope Donald Trump the doesn't find out. The gentleman, the gentleman the said that I support a ministry of lies. That's a lie. Been, and I demand his words be taken down. All right. Well, if, look, if you're willing to dissociate yourself from Donald Trump, then I'm happy to withdraw that. But let me just say this. He said that there were people from January 6th uh, who were being uh, somehow, I don't know, falsely or wrongly prosecuted. I wonder if the gentleman... The gentleman, does not with, the gentleman does not withdraw his remarks. Uh, we will have vote on whether to take down the, gentle, the gentleman's remarks. Mr. Chair, can I make a parliamentary inquiry? Some of the controversy seems to be over Mr. Gomer's statement that there was a lie in the resolution. If he would tell us what the lie he says was, we could determine whether or not Mr. Raskin's statement is correct or not. It does not changed the fact that he said I was supporting a ministry of lies, and that's not true. I, he also wanted to point it out, he misrepresented what I said. I did not say that the DOJ was, uh, I wanted, or it was a ministry of truth. No, Would, the DOJ is the, <laughs> the equivalent of Mr. Gomer, what, what, was, what was the lie you were referring to? Would Mr. You're Raskin, changing the subject from my Mr. demand Ra the words be the taken down. Will, suspend. will Mr. Raskin agree that uh, Mr. Uh, Gomert was not personally lying? Oh, I never said he was personally lying. I, but, but what, the, I, what the I'm the gentleman, the gentleman agrees he's personally lying. The word is personally not lying. <laughs> the, the words, therefore. Uh, I, well, be all I said the is I never is, said that he was lying. The gentleman I will suspend the words. The gentleman has said that he did not ask, that he did not call the gentleman from Texas a liar, that he was not personally lying. Therefore, uh, there, is no, uh, 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 there is no occasion to ta take down anybody's words. And uh, who had the time? I forget. Mr. Raskin had the time. And Mr. Raskin... Uh, We'll continue his remarks. He has a minute okay. and a half left. I, I appreciate that. Um, there was some suggestion that there was some uh, false uh, prosecutions going on by the Department of Justice or people are being hounded. I know some of our colleagues have described people arrested for violent assaults on federal officers and violent invasion of the Capitol and interruption of federal proceeding as political prisoners. Um, and we have uh, people who are somehow claiming to be on the side of the police who have nothing to say about violent assaults on our officers who were injured, wounded, hospitalized, broken necks, broken vertebrae, broken jaws, traumatic brain injuries, post-traumatic stress syndrome. We hear nothing about it. Uh, it's remarkable. So look, either you're going to oppose domestic terrorism across the board or you're not, and I oppose it across the board. If you look at the language of this legislation, it puts us squarely against domestic terrorism across the board, but there's some people who seem to wanna to be forgiving and indulgent of domestic terrorism if it comes from people who they view as being on their side against critical race theory. And that is a very dangerous moment for American democracy when the two major political parties are not standing together against violent domestic terrorism against our institutions. So I think that's just a sorrowful and tragic moment. And uh, none of us should be supporting a ministry of lies or a ministry of truth in the Orwellian sense. We should just be the supporting the facts and the, the law. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Arizona seek 